Hi, Sims. So I'm living here in the dorm at UTC for a couple of weeks, working with other engineering teachers, learning a bunch of uh, cool stuff. And uh, boy, good conversations with these people. Um, they, uh, we spend all day together in the lab, and then you know, live in the dorms together, eat three meals a day together. It's it's a lot of togetherness. And uh, one of the ideas I've been hearing going around is. Uh, because we, we talk about everything. I, I like people that aren't afraid to talk about stuff because those are people who are confident enough to hear opposing views and believe what they believe enough to say it. Uh, so good conversations here, people that know how to talk and, and disagree in amicable ways and, and are honestly learning from each other. It's, it's pretty fantastic. One of the ideas I hear going around a lot though is the idea that uh, uh, Theologically, all you need to do is live a good life. If you just live a good life, God will be pleased. Um, well, the atheist doesn't say that God will be pleased, but, you know, th that's a popular idea. And I think some of the reasons why it's popular is, um, first off, it, it doesn't come out and say it, but sort of you get to decide what is a good life, and who wouldn't want to decide that. And People are generally planning on living a good life anyway, so it's like, hey, one less thing to worry about. I was going to do that anyway. There's a lot of appeal to that kind of concept. But how does it really work? Um, how does it really work? How, the question I would have is, how good is good enough of a life? So if you, if you had um, some lives you know something about, and you tried to rate them on some sort of scale, what would that scale look like? You could have higher goodness up here, uh, high numbers and low numbers mean a, not a good life, a less good life. So if you put on there like Mother Teresa and Mahatma Gandhi, they would probably have really high numbers. I don't know how you're making your scale. Are those numbers hundreds, thousands, millions, a Google, Google, whatever. Really high numbers. If you put Charlie Manson or Adolf Hitler, you would probably give them a really low number um, because not as much goodness there, I would think. And most people, I think, would put themselves somewhere in the middle. Um, but where do you draw that line? If you were in Islam, you would draw that line at zero, because you live and die by the scales. You need your good to outweigh your bad. You'd have positive and negative numbers. Uh, I wouldn't have any negative numbers on mine. I mean, you can have them on yours. I wouldn't have any negative numbers on mine, because I think, you know, absolute no goodness, zero goodness would be zero. And then you'd go up from there. Um, it, that that evil or or sin is just the absence of good, uh, and so any uh, any missed goodness there is just going down towards zero. So you might say, "Oh, wait a minute! I had Hitler negative. That's fine. I have Hitler negative. And uh, what? Your Hitler's not negative? Well." My, on my scale, if Hitler ever did even one single good thing, then he would be above zero. Uh, and you might say, well, Hitler never did one good single good thing. Uh, oh, yeah? Well, he's the guy who killed Hitler. So, I, I joke, but for real, I don't know. Maybe he held the door open for somebody when he was eight. I don't know. Um, if you know me, you know I honestly don't feel qualified to rate people on these scales. Uh, this is just a thought exercise. So... Whatever your scale is, maybe uh, Hitler and Manson are negative a blue bazillion trillion, and Mother Teresa is positive a, a bajida doodle, whatever. I don't know. Making up words now. Um, where do you draw the line? I think most people in comfortably just draw that line a little bit below themselves so that they're on the same side as Gandhi and Teresa. And they're like, yep, I'm doing it. I'm good. And then you feel good about yourself. All right. Is that where the line is, though? Is that the amount that makes God good? Or, or makes God okay with you? I don't think so. Um, in my Christian belief system, of course, um, the, the only life good enough is one without sin. One that n never missed out on any goodness. One that is completely full of goodness. All the way full. To the top. But where is the top? Um, people don't understand how big our God is. 
And they think that um, they think that there is some sort of top, and there's not. Uh, our God is infinitely good, perfectly holy, forever just. Uh, there's just there's no limit here. And so the only number that represents God's holy perfection would be positive infinity. It doesn't matter whether you set up your, your number line with negatives uh, or stopping at zero or whatever. Positive infinity is what we're talking about. Now, there may be other people with other that think God is just really high on that scale. You know, that's, that's not the Christian belief system. Um, You know, people people always think our, our God is too small. I saw a bumper sticker. I guess it's a feminist th feminism thing. My my goddess gave birth to your God, and I thought, well, how does she know my God didn't knock up her goddess? I, don't, I mean, again, I'm joking, but, like, there's always a bigger step that you can talk about, a higher level. Well, however big and high you think we're talking about, we're actually talking higher because it's infinite. It's going on forever. Uh, so... If infinity is the goal on that number line, if that's how good we're talking about, how far away are you from that? Nobody makes it. Uh, you've got, you know, you look at Hitler, wherever you put him on the number line, and you say, well, how far is it from him to God's holy perfection? Infinitely far. That gap is infinitely far. I'm bringing infinite down there, so it's on the camera. <laughs> um, so, infinitely far. <coughs> If you uh, if you think, however, though, of Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi, it's still going towards infinity. It's still infinitely far. Effectively, they're not really any closer. So we love to look at each other, to look at other humans and, and rank and say, this one's good, this one's bad, you know, good enough. But that's not what we're supposed to be comparing to. When you realize that nobody makes it. it. It helps you understand the whole world better. It answers some of those tough questions, like uh, people always wonder why do bad things happen to good people? Well, that's kind of a messed up question, because throughout all of time, there's only ever been one good person, and I think we all know why bad things happen to him. Anyway, it would be easy to go into a big tirade about how Christ is the propitiation for our sins and all, but I'm preaching to the choir, you're sibs, we, we know this stuff. Uh, just interesting thought exercises, and I wonder how uh, engineers who are good at math, um, I think the only way they miss the fact that everyone's infinitely far is that they're imagining a God who is not all the way up at infinity, whose standard is not that high. Uh, anyway, I know you, I hope you're all doing well. I know you're not capable of doing infinitely perfectly well, um, but in so much as you have the ability, I do hope you will endeavor to continue to stay shiny.